Hey everyone, Tim again from the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount, and as always, I'd like to give you an open invitation. Come out and be with us for service. I'll go ahead and give you, before I let my let my mouth start going and then uh, 20 minutes later, just remember to do this. Let me go ahead and give our church service announcements. Uh, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m., and we come back at 6 p.m. the afternoon for our evening service. Also, have a midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. So uh, come out and be with us, and uh, we uh, have a homecoming. Uh, that won't be this Sunday, but the next Sunday, whatever date that is. Let's see if I can see that. Uh, let's see. Looks like it'll be the, uh, the 21st. Uh, it'll be our homecoming. And uh, also the next uh, DIG meeting. Uh, well, let me... You know something, you think I'd already have these things written down or up by the time I, I click on that record button. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes I'm down, my mind's about a million miles away. Okay, uh, once again, uh, the dig program, deeperingod.com. That's all one word. Deeper in God is all one word, dot com. Uh, that is a uh, children's ministry uh it's well technically six uh, ages six through eighteen. Um, ministry started by my wife and my niece, and uh, right now it's not really sanctioned and affiliated with Word of Life. But I go ahead and give, make an announcement on here, uh, and if they have something coming up, if you go to their web page, and that was as I said, deeperingod.com. Um, there's several different links. You have teen lessons, outreach, challenges, adult lesson, lessons can't talk uh, events photos and contacts so if you have a question with information uh, click that contact button and uh, they'll get back to you uh, as far as the events you can click on the events link and uh, and of course it uh, <laughs> yay it's not far enough over here so I can actually uh, see it here just one second here. Okay. Uh, looks like the next dig meeting will be August the 27th. Uh, so, as I said, uh, if you want more information, just uh, more than more than I've given, get, feel free to go to the website. Uh, uh, like I said, look it over and uh, see what you think. Our last meeting, we were represented by, I think, I don't know, four to five different churches. Um, actually, uh, uh, from uh, different uh, denominations. Each one was from a different denomination. Um, see, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get out of this whole denominational separation and uh, fight. You know, that's the only way I can describe it, you know, or contention, uh, rather, I guess. Uh, between denominational, you know, well, you don't believe my way, then, well, you know, the, my way is correct, and you're the, we're the only ones going to heaven. No, or, you know, I can, and the church can never say, if the, if, if the church says that, then something is uh, definitely wrong spiritually uh, with that church or that man or woman that says that. Because uh, uh, God's got people from uh, all the denominations that is saved uh, but like I said we, oh, that main reason that is is get the kids together teach them how to work together how to you know uh, 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 they, they teach have lessons and have fun have uh, you know fun and games uh, have uh, snacks and everything but like I said if you're wanting to go uh, look that over do that like I said it uh, I just uh, I like to give them a, a good plug you know and mention it uh, because it is a good work you know uh, 
like I said, it is their ministry. It's not connected with the church, but uh, uh, it is a good work. Uh, this next uh, meeting, uh, they still have up. They haven't uh, uh, fully decided where the next meeting's going to be, but just as soon as it's up, I'll announce it. I'm sure they will announce it on the page and on the, on the Facebook uh, uh, sites they're connected to. That way everyone will know. Uh, but at any rate, uh, that's as far as, uh, as far as I know, that's the only announcements on things that's, that's going on that I, that I know of. Uh, <laughs> sometimes ignorance is bliss. No. Uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and ask. But the, the, before we get started, actually, you can go ahead and be turning with me to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Uh, but I, there's a little news article I want to bring up I found this morning. Uh, I don't know if anyone else, I'm sure someone else will find it, if not, and, and uh, talk about it themselves, especially the ones, the uh, people out there that are uh, called to be watchmen, called to be spiritual warriors, you know, spiritual warfare, end of things, and to give warnings about when things uh, happen uh, or, or that's, or, that's going to happen. Uh, they're on the website called The Week. And that's all one word, uh, the, the week, W E E K, uh, dot com. There's a link under there, uh, speed reads. If you type in, uh, well, I can, just, you, I can give you the name of the article because I'm looking at it right, looking at it right now. Uh, um, the title of the article is archaeologists discover 2,000 year old scrolls with demon invoking magic spells. Now a lot of you out there maybe that might watch no oh my god all good grief and everything like that. No don't 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 underestimate the enemy okay. Let me just tell you how many people I've seen that have underestimated the enemy that have challenged him or that have fought a spiritual battle that 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 were not prepared to do so you're saying what makes you so special i'm not special but if you're called into if you're called into a certain ministry does not the lord give you the wisdom and knowledge to fulfill and do that ministry same difference here uh you know if if whatever insert whatever he equips you for that and besides if you're a Christian if you're saved you can battle these forces you have power over them he, the, God's word tells us in several places why are you giving us information like this because like I said we need to know things like this because never before and I but before I don't want before long, it will get much, much worse. The enemy is going to be attacking the true churches of God. And I don't say churches of God as the denomination. I'm saying the churches that are actually following God, that are actually saved and walking in God's will. And of course, you know the devil hates us. Uh, even if you're, even if you're not in God's will, and he's, and he, he's kind of ruling the church. Which is sad to say, he still hates you and tries and is trying to do everything he can just to knock everybody out and get churches shut down, getting people mad at each other, and uh, that's not what we want. We want to continue to serve the Lord and walk in His way to help get people saved, pull back people from the fire. We might, you know, the war's already been won. Okay, the war was won at Calvary, but the whole, the entire thing, the entire issue hasn't been finished going to be finished in the end when you know Satan's going to be cast into the bottomless pit released after a thousand years and you know go into revelations and read all that uh, I know that to some people the thought of going into revelations is kind of a daunting task and everything a lot of stuff in there is kind of like wow it's kind of difficult to understand but that's where you have to Refer to other books of the Bible, like Daniel and stuff like that, uh, old in the Old Testament and New Testament, and uh, ask the Lord to give you an understanding of 
the things that are going on in these last days. Uh, you guys know me if you watch me, you know, that's why I always say that. You know, the best the best thing to do uh, is let God's word interpret God's word. Okay? You know, let it uh, let it speak for itself. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, and pray and seek that wisdom. At any rate, uh, let me go ahead and get through this so we can get into our lesson. Uh, let me read this. Actually, I'll go ahead and read it. It's not a very long article. Let me read it. It says, Archaeologists have discovered what they believe to be 2,000-year-old spells, as they said in the quotations, etched into tiny rolls of gold and silver, uncovered alongside skeletons in northeastern Serbia. But as archaeologists attempt to decipher the language of, on the magic scrolls, they admit to not knowing if the spells were intended for good or evil. Hmm. Said one of the archaeologists, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name because, or her name, <laughs> uh, because I fell miserably and I don't want to offend anybody. Says, we read the names of a few demons that are connected to the territory of modern day Syria. Archaeologist, that person, told uh, uh, Reuters. Uh, the scrolls were discovered inside two lead amulets and appear to have been similar to use to binding magic practiced in other cultures. Such charms were typically buried with people who had died violently because the souls of such people took longer to find rest and had a better chance of finding demons and deities and pass the wishes to them so they could do their magic. Uh, Dankovich, that's how I'm pronoun that's how I'm pronouncing it. If you get it wrong, I'm sorry. Say it. So that's the archaeologist. Uh, so binding magic could be used to make someone fall in love, but it could also be used for dark, malignant curses, to the tune of may your body turn dead as cold and heavy as this lead, Dankovich said. For the time being, the purpose of the spells remains a mystery and may never be fully understood while the alphabet is written. In Greek letters, the language is Aramaic. It's a Middle Eastern mystery to us. Myomir Korak, the chief archaeologist at the site, toy... <sighs> the chief archaeologist at the site told Reuters <laughs> and this was like I said from the week dot com and uh, the person that did the article name was uh, Jiva Lange uh, I hope I pronounced your name right too what is, it, what is it with the names today oh my goodness but, but anyway what you're saying well, brother why are you talking about that because that is part of the spiritual warfare that I preach and teach and am involved in uh, talking about deliverance ministries talking about some of the stuff like that they find uh, satanic in origin uh, all, you know uh, dating back to you know to Babylon you know and of course uh, Sumeria and all that stuff and uh, um, people we know that there's a dark side to all this stuff uh, the enemy there's there's more than just the devil, and a lot of people. That's all they talk. Well, the devil did. Devil did this. Devil did that. Devil. Well, yeah, he he is. Uh, if you want to, probably that you know, if you want to call it, what, the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air, or the prince of this world. So we know all this other stuff kind of comes in under him technically. Uh, don't want to say that you know his army and uh, God's army is on the same level just the same way I told you about before the picture where it shows and I hate this picture shows the devil and Jesus arm wrestling and it's like you know they're just they're just stuck in the middle right there <laughs> there's 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 no no contest no contest at all that's uh that those that strip that picture off the internet I can't stand that uh but the same way people we have if we're born of God we're saved walking 
you know, been sanctified, been had the gift of the Holy Ghost, walking in His power, walking in the Spirit of God. Uh, we have power over these things, and uh, they can do a lot of damage. They can uh, they can come into church and do a lot of damage if people are not uh, vigilant, uh, people are not watching and praying. Um, but then again, that's why I guess that people like myself and many others, not just me, just many other people out there doing videos on YouTube for their church, for their own personal ministry, um, um, and some I don't even know about, and some I go to church with. You know, we each have our ministries, and uh, like I said, there uh, some of it has to, you have to uh, be willing to look into some dark areas. Uh, that's where you have your spiritual armor on, and all all the time. You guys know me. I always say that you never take your spiritual armor off. Never. Uh, you know, if you say, "Well, make a statement like, uh, you know, well, yeah, I woke up and uh, threw my armor, spiritual armor on this morning. I'm ready to go." Well, my question to you is, is why did you even take it off in the first place? You don't. You don't. You know. I know some people just make statements like that. You know, they're not meaning anything. But uh, no, uh, seriously, it is a serious thing. You need to keep it on because. Uh, you can be same way the enemy tries to do before I do anything like these videos or talk to somebody or testify or preach or teach or whatever at church and becomes in tries to oppress and depress never fails he does you know uh, but that's how you know that you're going in the right direction you're doing what you're supposed to do I'm not bragging that goes for everybody out there that's walking in God's will okay so uh, at any rate let's uh I think that's all my announcements and I, I you know I always have to have some kind of opening comments I guess you call it <laughs> but anyway just uh, remember all that remember all of our service times remember all the things you want to know remember our homecoming remember uh, the dig program uh, and uh, leave us all the announcements and remember the article that we just talked about there's uh, there's probably you can do research and find many other things out there similar uh, enemy is moving as, as hard and as fast as he can to uh, uh, bring more and more spiritual evil or spiritual evil spirituality to the world today okay uh, and he's trying his best to and and succeeding in some areas bringing inside the churches so brother how do he does how, how does he do it how does he even get in the door like as I said some people uh, so some churches don't even believe that there is a devil anymore that he's just the human personification of evil and that's all that he really is he's not an actual person well the Lord Jesus said he beheld Satan falling from falling as lightning from heaven and speaks to him took the keys of death and hell away from him so he's a very real entity that as I said earlier that hates us because we are made in the image of God uh, I don't care if he hates us or not. You know, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't much care for him uh, either, uh, or all the other things, uh, the demonic, uh, the unclean, the seducing spirits, fallen angels, and maybe some other things that you know. That I'll say this: that can't be proven uh, without stretching some some things a little bit and talking about some things that really and truly uh, <laughs> I'd have to get somebody that that would be higher up with that information to be able to bring it and to verify some other things that are in existence that fight against us as well yeah ooh peak, did I pique your interest <laughs> okay here we go uh, book of Colossians uh, chapter 3 and verse 1 Let's read together. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So seek those things. Talks about, well, you know, that's, I'm, I, I, always, I sometimes think about that. When we're riding along, we're seeing the clouds and everything. Uh, you know, on a, on a beautiful day like today, which I took, me, it took, me and my father went out and run some errands and uh, driving along, you know, and talking and, 
you know, just happen to know uh, or see the uh, the sky blue and the clouds and everything, and you know, it gets just gets you to thinking sometimes. You know, it's like, well, you know, that's of course it's always been, you know, heaven being upward, and we always think hell being downward, and you know, the heart of the earth, and uh, but you also got to remember uh, they're in right now they're in uh, other other dimensions, other realities. Uh, one of, the, one of these days, all that's going to be stripped away, and we're going to see things as they really are. Uh, so, but uh, every time it's talked about, it's you know, it's like pointing upward, you know, going to heaven, or you're know, going down to you know to hell, you know, if you if you're not saved. That's how we always do it. But uh, like I said, as long as you have to remember, it's like okay, well, right now, yeah, we can do that because that's just the normal way that everybody has done that I've ever known anybody to do pointing upward and downward uh, gives us kind of a frame of reference you know uh, in the in this reality that we live in because you know we it's uh, you know we're only tuned in to unless the Lord blesses you with your spiritual eyesight you're only tuned in to this reality right here you know, you see what you see, you know, you see tall buildings and you can, you know, look, you know, look down and, you know, uh, say from a building and see downward and look, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, that's, that's the world we live in. Uh, but anyway, that just, that just kind of crossed my mind when I read this and it said, seek those things that are above. Uh, not just talking about the actual heights, but talking about above meaning in Christ, uh, your spiritual uh, growth. Uh, you're seeking those things which are above, above man, above the nature of man, above the enemy. Uh, it's in your spirit and you gain strength by studying, hearing, reading God's word. Uh, and since see where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God and he's sitting, he's sitting there making intercession in prayer for you and I. If we have a need, he said, ask. That your joy may be full. That should make some people happy right there now. There we go again. I, I need a little button I can push and when I get ready to do this, a little, a little sign will pop up alongside and it goes disclaimer, okay? <laughs> when I say talk about that, uh, you know, I'm still not talking about praying for just a bunch of stuff. Stuff that's going to perish, stuff that's going to vanish. Everything, you know, is going to melt with a fervent heat, even the elements, the Bible tells. You know, rest assured, nothing you have down here uh, will you have uh, after you pass from this life on to the next. Wherever your destiny is. Uh, which right now could be settled one way or the other. You need to choose Christ if you want the eternal life. If you just don't care and you know just want to eat, don't mind it if it's eternal death, then you don't have to do anything except just keep going the way you that you want to go. Uh, I hope you choose Christ way well, because nobody loves you more, nobody wants you more, and you know no, nobody else could or would die for you the way Christ died for you even if they did and were willing to go through all that Christ went for us doesn't matter there's nothing that would just we would just die I could die for you but it would just be my death his death on the cross he took our place for the sins of mankind a substitutionary death he performed for us that way we might have life and life everlasting life more but even more abundantly down here uh, as I said if you're you know a true Christian walking in word and you know you guys know that I, I think I think the difference between just being a church member and a Christian we got a lot of, of good church members out there uh, so but how many true, how many real Christians do we have out there? Can't see you right now. Can't you know? Can't say raise, raise your hand. You, you, 
in your heart and you and the Lord know that. Know what kind of Christian that you're if you're if you're if you are really walking in his will and seeking his will. Uh hey, I know sometimes it gets hard and get you get way down and you're thinking, Well, you know, I thought this was gonna be an easy walk and you know, I was gonna walk through rose uh, rose bushes and just you know and just everything's gonna be okay well you know as i've said before you know those rose bushes have thorns and uh that's the kind of walk that we're going to have in this life we're going to have good times we're going to be up on the mountain sometimes okay but sometimes we're going to be down in the valley uh but rest assured as i've said before the lord is that lily of the valley the god's word talks about so he is with you even though that you are in the valley. may not even seem like you may be so downtrodden and upset and worried and uh, whatever the case may be. You know, you, each, each situation is different. But the Lord, even in the valley, will be with you. And I like that, you know, and of course, you know, it's just one of those things that people wrote talks about you know the little, the whole thing about where the, the walking on the beach and the sand and the two sets of footprints and then all of a sudden you know, it comes down to one footprint and you know and then it said that's the times that i carried you through these problems well that's you know kind of it's a good analogy uh it's the way the lord does when you're having problems you know seek him out uh don't make don't make prayer your last effort well i've done everything else i guess i might as well pray no, 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 don't uh, pray first. D do what you can. If it's some kind of problem, but, you know, d pray first before anything. God's your source. He's your strength. He's your one that's going to take care of these things. Excuse me, I had to have dry as well. I had to have a drink. So, if you then be risen with Christ, meaning we were saved, and, you know, baptism, and, you know, risen with Christ, uh, we are to seek those things which are above. All those things I talked about. Not just, you know, what's above, you know, as in heaven above, you know. Talking about the things that are above. Above, you know, as I said, just what the average normal man seeks, you know. Your normal man just may seek you know, can't wait till Friday night because, you know, he's seeking, you know, that uh, that bag of uh, drugs, pills, and uh, that, you know, those bottles or cans of uh, alcohol. And that may be, you know, the things that he's seeking. Uh, am I making, making, am I making fun of that? I, but, well, but, why, and why would you say, and that's why I say it, oh, because known people, in the past that's like that that was that was like that rather uh and specific one i know of is has uh, i don't know when he died uh, haven't really tracked down the information uh but it was like that uh you know he's gone now and you know we try to witness to him i probably told the story before while he's sitting there and doing that, all he would say, I'm covered, I'm good, I'm okay. But, you know, you're sitting there drinking and doing your drugs and everything, and you're saying that you're okay with God, you're saved. It's sad. It really is uh, that people are so deceived that way. It's, 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 deception is just going through the land like, I mean, it's, it's like a wildfire. The stuff that once that were that was preached, uh, that's been twisted around, you know, people that that once said amen to are now saying, you know, you guys have heard me talk about these other preachers and teachers that are teaching the damnable doctrines or doctrines of devils. You know, they've let those seducing spirits in the door, and it's went from front to back, side to side, and and it's on everybody, even the teaching. Um, and you, like I said you guys heard me mention teaching stuff like, and you know God's word says if you take the mark of the beast, that's it. You are sealed for destruction. 
I guess let me say this. I'm, I'm not going to use the word destruction because that's the other thing. People are saying that you can, that's if you, if you barely miss going to heaven, you slip and just make it, just almost make it, but don't quite make it. You're just going to cast into hell and the lake of fire and you're going to burn up and then it's going to be just never like, never, be like you never existed. It's not going to be an eternal punishment. So people are not worried. People are not concerned about their eternal life. But I'm going to tell you, I guarantee you, God's word does not support any of that. You go to hell, you go to the lake of fire, but you're there for eternity, for punishment. You're saying, well, why would God send me? You sent yourself there by not choosing Christ. He's given you every opportunity to choose him to choose, to choose the salvation that he has offered but you keep on and keep on and keep on rejecting pray the Lord opens your eyes but this stuff you're being told like you're going to burn up and that's just it that's a lie truth is that you will be there for eternity truth is you take the mark of the beast then you're, you are sealed for that same punishment you blaspheme watch what you say against people that's walking in God's will and doing his work watch what you say about it. before you say anything before you let anything slip out of your mouth grab hold of it and think about it because if you someone's doing something and just as the, the priest and everything was making fun of the Lord Jesus and saying that he, the, the the miracles that he was doing, he was doing it through Beelzebub, basically the devil. He was he was doing the, the power that he was using was not from God. It was from the 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 enemy, the devil. Well, they they whoever they were, the ones that said that they sealed their fate. You can do the same thing if you're not careful. So if somebody's doing something, you pray. You pray, see if it's of the Lord, but you keep your mouth shut and hold your peace because you don't want to say or do anything or even think of anything. Norm, if, I, if I'm something's going on and a thought tries to enter my head, I block it off, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Say, if it's of the Lord, it's going to work out everything. It's going to go along with everything. Everything's, you know, everything's going to be in order. It's going to be God's word. And it's going to be great. If not, it's going to come to naught, and you know you don't have to worry about it anyway. So that's all I'm saying. You know, the best thing is just to you know because the, there's uh, people don't believe there, but there are ways you can you can seal your fate. And you guys know how I feel is there's, there's ways you can get your name taken out of the book of life too. And say if you don't believe me, like I said, go to the, go to the back of the uh, the book of Revelation. The last, the, the last few verses, and you'll see exactly where it says it, that your name can be taken out of the book of life. I know people don't like to hear this. People don't like to hear us preaching. They, they want everything's going to be okay. They can do what they want to. They're saved no matter what, and you know they're just going to heaven, even though they live like the devil during the week. But uh, live like angels on uh, Sunday, or act like them, and you know, got you know, smile from ear to ear, and you know, dressed in their finest, and you know, it's well, you know, you got people, you got people fooled at the church, you m maybe, uh, you know, you may have the people fooled, may have the deacons fooled, may have the preacher fooled, and you may not, they may, Lord may show them. Uh, your mail, <laughs> the Lord may Lord may open your mail and let them see what's what's inside it, see what's going on, and uh, you know that's uh, that's happened before. So if you're going to go to the trouble of going through, you know, why not do it for real instead of just having that form of godliness. But denying the power thereof, talking about God's word, why not just get into the goodness of God's will? And if you're not saved, truly saved, 
and you're just putting on a show, why don't you actually get saved and walk in God's will? The reason is people are having too much fun in their flesh. Whatever that may be, insert, fill in the blanks, whatever it may be. You're having too much fun in what you're doing. Believe me, had this conversation with several people. Uh, I've said this before. You're not going to find, and uh, this hits home a little bit for for a certain reason. But uh, this, uh, you're not going to find happiness in any one thing. Uh, do uh, stuff that you might do, or uh, any any person that you're with, and any of that stuff. You're never going to find any true happiness in anything or anybody in this life, period, except, except the Lord Jesus. I believe you say that so much because it's true. That is the crux of the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ died for you, gave his life for you. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, when he died and that veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, and that was a thick veil that wasn't just like a little, you know, silk or a little uh, see through veil. It was, in some areas, it was like, I mean, a thick, you know, heavy. Uh, I mean, you know, it would. The, it wasn't like you could just take a knife and just stick and rip down through it. I'm talking about something huge, thick. It was rent from top to bottom. That meant we had at that point. After that, we have access to the throne of God, the very throne of God, to be able to come to come boldly before the throne and you know make your petitions known unto God. Uh, there again, doesn't say, you know, as far as being boldly come, boldly say, yeah, Lord, I think I deserve a truck. I'm praying for a truck. You know, I know you'll give it to me because I've been, I've been so good. I've been such a good Christian. And you know why you had it, you know, maybe if I can find, you know, find a, a bag inside of it or maybe in the, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the truck bed, a bag full of, uh, you know, money, maybe a million dollars. You know, I've been good this week. You know, I, I figure I deserve it. So, uh, you know, why don't you just do that? Uh, nothing like that. I know I'm being kind of, it's kind of dramatic. I know, but, uh, well, some people pray for stuff. And when they don't get it, they get mad. And then like a little kid stomp off and, you know, just, uh, <laughs> What I'm talking about now. Let me let me say this. Let me add this in there. Lord can bless you with material things if it's His will, and if He thinks that you can handle it and not place what He blesses you with before Him. Okay. He said we could pray for anything. Doesn't mean He's going to say yes or you know. If you have a need, say, if I say that you need, I need a vehicle to get to church. Saying that's what I pray for. Say, Lord, I know I can't keep depending on all these people to drive me. You know, I'm spending a fortune in uh, taxi money, and you know, I can't keep doing this. Could you please bless me with a vehicle that way I can come to church? I've seen that happen. It may not be the newest, latest, and greatest, most expensive vehicle that's on the road. But the Lord has given people transportation. Hey, I've seen that. That's what I'm talking about. That's Lord for material things to bless Him, and He'll bless you back. Maybe give you more. But what I'm mostly talking about is because you know I know all the material things, and you know, like I said, I like stuff. I like hobbies and everything, and certain things uh, I study and. You know, books I read and maybe stuff I collect or something like that. Uh, it's wonderful. That's good. The Lord allows you to have fun during this lifetime. But there's a time to set this stuff aside. 
and it's time to do his work and uh, as I said most of what I'm praying for is the spiritual blessings that open the spiritual eyes that I might see that teach me all that you can and insert it write it upon the tables of your heart God's Word that way you can give it to someone else look at our next verse Colossians 3 and verse 2 set your affections on things above there we go talking about above again not on things on the earth now there we're talking a little bit of a height type of things because yes God and his ways are so much higher than I than our ways it, it, there's no no comparison but aren't you glad aren't, doesn't that excite you especially if you're saved and you're a Christian and you've accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior you're saved doesn't that make you feel good knowing that there is a God an all-powerful um, omnipotent omnipresent uh, you know just, I mean all in all that did creation everything around us that has that much power yet he loved each and every one of us so much that he sent his one and only son to die for us doesn't that excite you to know that doesn't it make you feel good and I've said this many many times before to be able to lay your head on your pillow at night no regrets from the day that day you walked in God's will you were dead to the flesh maybe the devil tried to tempt you to do something but you resisted him and he fled from you the way God's word said and you can lay down your, you can put your head on your pillow at peace and have a peaceful sweet rest a lot to be said for that for that rest for that peace that, that the other peace that only can come through the Lord the peace that passes all understanding that God's word tells us or as you can walk through stuff that some people say how do you how do you do how do you get through that I don't understand that but this was this was this bad and this bad and everything well the Lord brought me through it and lifted me up above it and you know gave me that peace heard that a lot of times see what it says that our affections should be on things above should our affection our affections should be on the Lord and the Father and to have the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, so we can do the works that he intended us to do you know I still can't find where people say that the gifts of God have stopped the problem is is we have changed we have watered down the gospel we have made it unspiritual we have made everything in it almost naturalistic and unfortunately there again you guys you know I'm not and I'm not hopping on it just willy not willy-nilly as the old saying goes I'm not, I just just by saying it uh, <laughs> you know not uh, not saying it lightly uh, but uh, I guess, I guess that's where I'm trying to get out of here. Anyway, I'm just gonna say, I'm not. This way, a lot of the seminaries have went now. A naturalistic explanation to some of the stuff, you know. Well, just for instance, for instance, we'll say that some say, well, these demon possessions, you know, we talk, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, they're trying to say, well, the devil's just kind of the evil in man, and he's not really a real being. It's just the personification of the evil that man does, and you know, that goes the same the way for demons. You know, people possess. It's not really, you know, uh, that do all this. It's not really demonic possession. It's it's a psychological disorder, and you know, uh, granted, I, yeah, I've seen people with psychological disorders, you know, but also. Uh, there's signs too that you know that it is, it is demonic possession and I've seen people delivered to that hey I've seen people delivered of uh, psych you know, psychiatric issues as well that's why I said God's all powerful 
we serve a mighty God that we're supposed to set our affections on. Not of the things of this world, like I said, all of it's going to pass away eventually. All the stuff, the all the near, you know, dear thing, yeah, the things, you know, it's just, you know, all going to go. All going. To, you're not going to take them with you. You know, you know, it came in this world naked, and that's the same way that you're going. You know, you're going to be standing for God. You're not going to have any shielding whatsoever. He is. He's. In, he already knows it. Already knows everything. But you're going to be reviewed from. You know. It, from you know, and and given and given account. Uh, that's why I want to be. I want to be saved now. That way, I can go to the judgment seat of Christ, and know that I'm going to be allowed to enter into the joys of the Lord to heaven. I don't have to worry about the second death, standing before the you know the judgment throne of God. Whew. Imagine that, and just and it. Uh, <laughs> It's a scary thought, but if you're saved now, and should tonight you close your eyes and you don't wake up on this side of eternity, you wake up on the other, and if you're saved, you made it. But the key is, are are you ready right now? Preach or talk, however you want to look at message. What I don't know, a few days ago, I think it was. I think I titled it "Just Five More Minutes to Live." Uh, that really that really got to me really impressed me in my mind that saying and I've had that off and on my mind for the last since, since I since I did the video just five more minutes to live what a way to start <laughs> or, or yeah to, to start a uh, you know or, or not start the conversation but what a way to really open up to somebody when you're talking to him witnessing to him Saying, okay, well, listen, let me ask you this. What are you going to do if you just had five more minutes to live? That, uh, that's just, that just keeps resonating in my head. Uh, it's probably for a reason, but God does everything for a reason. So uh, who knows? We'll see what happens with that. Um, but uh, I believe I can, that the, I, I, I can have, I know that that came right directly from the throne of God. That came God, that it teaches it to ask this question right here. And whew, man, it, uh, that is sobering. Uh, that's a sobering thought. Uh, you know, some people might make fun of it and go, "Oh yeah, well, I, you know, I'd I'd, I'd 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 drink as much as I could, and you know, I'd do this, I'd do a drug, do some of my drugs real quick, quick, and you know, I'll just lay out and I'll just I'll just I'll just go on and then uh, go into nothingness. No, you're not going to go into nothingness. There's one of two places that you're going to go. So anyway, that's, that's that's good. See where the Lord takes that. But our affections should be on things of above, not on things of the earth. All that's going to perish, all going to burn. It says in verse three, for ye are dead. What? And your life is hid in Christ and God. You're dead. What do you? I, I we're here. You're dead to sin. How many times have I said, once you get saved, become a Christian, you are to get out of the sinning business. You are to strive for the perfecting of the saints. You should try and give all you can. That's why you study God's word and pray and try to get closer to him. Because before you do something, the spirit is going to give you a little bit of a kick and saying, don't do this. You know this is wrong. Don't do this. Don't say this. <laughs> stay back. Stay out of it. Keep your mouth shut. Pray, need to, and move on. You stay dead to sin. We need to, every day, reckon ourselves, reckon our bodies, reckon our spirits, so every, every part of our being dead to the flesh, dead to sin. You're going to be tempted in your flesh? Of course you are. Uh, we still got to walk in this flesh and battle that spiritual battle through this flesh. It's a spiritual thing. It's a, you don't you know it's you don't battle in the flesh per se. But we're dead to sin. We we are to be dead to sin as much as it lies within you. And you can move up. I guarantee you, people out there say, 
I just have a problem with this and so I feel like I move up you can move up no how, how do I know because I moved up I've seen other people move up and draw closer and and, and have a change that's uh, miraculous go from one end of the spectrum to the other end you know from the bad to the good and uh, just had someone say if someone we've been praying for at the church or they wasn't at the church but it was a I'll say this one of our good sisters at church her mother has been praying for her and her father well praise the Lord she her mother come to church and came to the altar made things right with the Lord and as happy as can be can't wait for service can't wait for studying the Bibles or for her to study her Bible and you know going to be an example to the husband might gain someone else uh, and you talk about a happy person so I was happy I was tickled for the lady because she saw her saw her mom uh, and, and older I don't know how older but uh, an old, old, older finally come to Christ that's it that's awesome to see you know, another one has been added to the book of life and is added to the kingdom that's going to be it's going to be in heaven wish more wish we'd get more like that but you know we know God's word said that you know that narrow is the way there's going to be few that's going to find it but broad is the way that leads to the destruction the end the you know the, the lake of fire and that many of there be that's going to be on it it's unfortunate you know we've got God's word coursing I mean, uh, you know flying through the world via internet you know it said then wouldn't come until the gospel was preached upon uh, in all nations well you know what it is pretty much all nations it's, it's in places where you can barely get food and barely get clean water we've got some kind of a satellite internet connection or something like that and be able to see and hear actually rather God's word being taught and ministries that take Bibles and places and uh, so <laughs> you know uh, so, how, so how close is the end I don't know Jesus said he didn't even know he said only the father knew there again someone says they know when the Lord's coming back you can tell them right then they're a liar and that they need to repent from that and get in God's word and look because it says only the father knows when the Lord is coming when he's sending the Lord back for the church amen well that's pretty straightforward you might offend somebody well if they're going around telling people that and getting people to what was it this guy that you know uh, that did that a while about years back said I know when the Lord's coming because I've worked it out uh, mathematically and it's going to be on this day at this hour and all this congregation sells everything they have their church and they blow all their money and have fun and all and go when the appointed time this guy and they all go to the top of this mountain and get ready to be raptured up well one minute after that time they're still standing there homeless uh, moneyless uh, probably wanting to strangle that pastor that preacher um, I think he's died. He's passed on since then. He because he actually did it again, and I believe some of the people actually that followed that followed him before that that did what they did did the same thing again. But uh, he's got his reward now. If it's not in God's word, uh, you can't support it through other means. You know. Uh, you don't preach it you don't teach it that uh, that's just beyond me that knowing God's word that someone would say something like that you know when he said only the father knows when it's going to happen well I know when it's going to be no he said he would so the Lord said he said he had no need to, to tell us the season we know when we're near that time by the season that we're in I'm not talking about season as in fall winter or summer you know spring all the time but when stuff started happening that the end was coming up 
Now, it still doesn't give an exact because no man knows the day or the hour. But we're seeing the things that he talked about coming to pass. He's, you know, the kingdom against kingdom, you know, nation against nation, you know, the wars, the pestilences, the famines, and, you know, there's still much more, much more to come. You know, this stuff, people, is not just going to happen overnight. Now, some things I've, I've said before, I still stand by, uh, there's some things that can change just like that. I mean, quick, almost overnight. Change. But there's some things prophetically that may take a while to come to fruition, come to, to, to you know, to happen. What? Well, but we still, still follow God and do His will and do what we're supposed to do until, until that end, until that time. Whatever time. What, you know, it's in God's hands. And that's where we leave it. Um, we just got to work for him while we while while it's still uh, daylight, while we're still in the day, in the light. Uh, you know, the time when it's our work is going to be done. And, you know, who's going to be in? You, I've said this a couple times last message. Whoever, whoever's in the ark and that ark door is closed by the Lord and sealed. That's it. Uh, that was, was talking about Noah's Ark. But, you know, let's, let's, let's go to the end of the history here, talking about the dispensation of grace that we're in in the church age. When it's finally come, when it finally comes to fruition, it's when it's finally, the Lord calls it into it, that's it. That last person comes to Christ or that however all that will work out when the Lord finally calls an end to it that's it ain't gonna be nobody else be allowed on that ark it's sealed the grace is over with why don't you make it sure right now which side that you're on believe me you want to be on the side of Christ you want to be saved well, you just a crazy cult member, you know. I'm talking I'm not talking about any kind of cult. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about a relationship with the Son of God. Salvation. That's what I'm talking about. Believing in Him for your salvation. His substitutionary death on the cross. That's what I'm talking about. That you believe it and accept it and ask for forgiveness and repentance for the sins that you've committed. Ask the Lord to forgive you of the all those sins, all those things that you've done. Come in your heart, change it. Have it and start having a genuine love for God and people and walking in God's will, studying His Word, witnessing, and whatever the God, whatever the Lord calls you to do, do that. So no, I'm not talking about any kind of cult, any kind of something like that. As I've said, you know, there is a true and undefiled religion God's Word talks about. But just in the natural, I only say I don't want just a religion because I can, I can, I, I, I can text on my phone religiously, you know, uh, do something else re religiously. I don't want just a religion, especially just man. I don't want man's religion. I want a relationship through that true religion that God's Word talks about. A true relationship with Christ. And you get that through being saved. So how about today? Are you saved? Let me tell you. I know we've said it and said it. People have said it for years and it still holds true right now. The end is coming. That dispensation of grace is going to be, it's going to be it. It's going to be called, you know, an end will be called to it. And if you're not in it, then, you know, know the outcome. Only one of two places you're going to go. It's heaven or hell. Like I said, you know, all hell is going to be emptied out and everything. All that is going to be cast into the lake of fire. 
which burneth forever. I want to see you come to the Lord. I want to see you saved. There are people out there that I've never met, never seen, probably never will on this side of eternity. I want to see you saved, see you in heaven. As much people as we can, we try to get before that appointed time. And we work and do each one of our jobs that we're supposed to do for the Lord because, like I said, because nobody knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows that time except the Father, except God. So that's why we got to work. Keep going. Can't just wait till you know, we don't have that little thing where, well, it's coming tomorrow, so I'm going to go out today and I'm going to run the streets and start waving my Bible and, you know, calling for people to come to repentance and stuff like that. No, the work needs to be right now because we don't know when the end is. But we got to be ready. How about it? Are you saved? You want to be saved? Just gave you this formula. Make wherever you are an altar. Doesn't have to be within the four walls of a church building. It can be at your home. It can be anywhere. So that's it. That's the message. That's what God would have me to bring today. Appreciate everybody for listening to this when they eventually read it. Uh, read it. When they eventually watch it. I hope it finds you well. Uh, God's been blessing. He's going to continue to bless. Uh, pray for us. Pray for my family, my church, and uh, pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, we'll do the same for you all, just as I always say. Uh, and let's all, let's all join, you know, not all, not as I say, not all join together and sing Kumbaya. I'd like, all join together in the bond of unity with, you know, as Christians should be as brothers and sisters in Christ should be in the bond of unity with each other and get as many as we can into the kingdom of God before it is everlasting too late. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you out there. Blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you out there as always. And uh, still thinking about that if you had just five minutes to live, what would you do? That's still just, just just resonating in my mind. Wow. But it's true. Anyway, we will see you next time. Take care. See ya.